Hey guys, I'm an M248 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the original Chips Challenge 1 and every level within it. But why? Because, I think about a month ago, Indy indeed had the idea, what if we optimized all the levels, but we can put blocks in place of anything we want. What kind of times could we get? And so over the following period of time, I think it was a few weeks, um, the two of us went through and routed out every level. We had some back and forths, had some ideas, and let's get started with lesson one, which was a pretty straightforward one. Um, but this was very interesting to come up with a route for, because this was the first level that we both tried. And that gets 89, which is six seconds faster. So lesson two shows replacing monsters, and that any water or bombs are really not going to be an obstacle. So I'm going to stop right here for lesson three, and we're going to play it, and then this level went through a lot of changes. You'll notice there's some headbanger rules, some boosting, just a lot of stuff going on. And we went through a lot of iterations on that. Uh, lesson four means you can just skip to some exit points. Lesson five has that, plus the non-existence glitch by replacing chip. That's faster in a few cases. Lesson six shows that you can wedge through some walls. This is a very fast-paced video. So lesson seven... Um, to give us some pause. Um, I was unable to find a better way to do this, even though walking around the thief looks pretty slow. Um, but it turns out you could just skip to the chips. So lesson eight is the first example of a level that is not made faster by being able to replace things with blocks. Uh, it's still 96.8 because the teeth is in the way. If you were to replace the teeth, then you would still get the exact same time as I did there, as you'd have to move that block out of the way. Uh, nuts and bolts, just walk and walk to the exit. Brush fire, just to walk to the exit. It's going to be a lot of these, uh, but trust me, like this might seem like most of these levels are pretty trivial, but there are some interesting ones beyond just saving a little bit of time here and there with some neat little uh, observations. So you can push blocks through exits. If we were doing it in links, it'd be a little different. And that's South Pole. So let's just play that again, but slowed down. So you'll notice here that the big thing about a South Pole is that it shows that ice is broken. Anytime there's a big field of ice, you can get a lot of boosts out of that. So teleblock, you can go outside the boundaries. So elementary, you gotta get that second key. That's a really easy way to do that. And cell blocked is not, again, a level where no time gets saved. It's still the same 971. So what did I do? I replaced everything that wasn't essential with a block. Just because. Um, not every case where um, there's no additional time to be gained has some sort of block replacement shenanigans, and there are some cases where I have blocks that don't do anything that may have done something in some other root approach. Um, while we're going through Nice Day, which is, again, the same as the normal route. Um, I just changed it to make it 100%. Um, the big thing about some of these blocks is Andy was also trying to minimize the number of necessary blocks, which I do have some of that in some of these routes, but for the most part, I was just interested in getting every move out of every level. So what that means is Digger, again, Turns out you can't save any time on this. I spent a I spent a quite a bit of time, just a lot of time, trying to find a better chip collecting route. And when I inevitably make one of these videos for the other sets, we are about halfway through CCLP1 at the moment, mostly me. Uh, I got walled at flip side at the moment. Um, then I'll definitely have something to say about this kind of open chip collecting level and how sometimes there is time to be saved. Um, but overall, like, I'm not too concerned with this. Like, this is a fun little project that I put way more into than I probably should have. Kind of like the soft locks, which Indy started with on the rocks as well. So my initial thought with this whole wall replacement thing was that it was going to be a bit of a bust, because you could just get into any exit you wanted, and that was going to be that. So the astute viewer might notice that um, the teleport at the start of Forced Entry was replaced, and that was entirely to facilitate that two-move shortcut at the very end of the level. 
All right, so Blink was the first level that we got to when we were going in order that we actually skipped because it was just too much. And it was one of the last levels I got to at the end. So you'll notice from the timer that I was able to find a 70 second route. And I think that's pretty impressive. It's fully 60% faster than the unaltered version. And it's a perfect example of, my initial theory was, don't you know, you just wedge to the exit, that's not interesting. Well, I could not have been more wrong, because there are a lot of levels like this where you have to get the chips, and it's not... To use a phrase I've used when describing uh, Ape Escape speedruns, it's not about skipping things, it's about skipping two things. And I've always found that really interesting. So yeah, this is just a couple of wedges to the finish at this point. Uh, this route went through quite a few iterations, and I stopped when I got to 5.30, just because I didn't want to push farther. I'm sure that there is more time there if you want to, but I spent a lot of time looking at that in Super CC. So Chicha Ships is the first case of an instant win level, where you just non-existence and step into the finish. So Go With The Flow was interesting. Man, this is such an awkwardly played run. I haven't actually watched, like, any of these. Uh, ping pong, turns out you can just go straight to the finish. So Mishmash was another one that was really interesting, and uh, Andy and I did not go back and forth on this. Andy did get a very nice time that I made it my goal to beat. I believe it was a 481. Um, and this was, I think, version 2 or 3 of my route on this. My first effort was, I think, 484, and then I found some other ways to make some shortcuts back. So you'll notice that I pushed that block up there, and the entire reason that was done, spend 2 to save 4 later. Uh, this sort of open maze level, where you just have to kind of go everywhere, but there's stuff in the way, so you have to clear paths for later, was without a doubt one of the most interesting types of level to work on. Uh, it was also one of the most intimidating, as this was one of the last levels I worked on for this set as well. Um, so, this chip down below where we currently are is a good example. Uh, the path just the path back just makes itself. Except it turns out that the best route I could find involved using that chip as a pathway to some other chips later. And you might be wondering, wait, why is that other chip being left behind? What's this path for? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do most of the top right area after we do the entire bottom right. We're going to use those chips in the center as the path back. And this route, just seeing all of these paths back, was quite the experience because none of this is obvious when you're first looking at the map. None of this is clear. Um, it's just a bunch of blocks and a bunch of walls, and you've got to figure out how to make something work. And the fact that there is anything that kind of works this well is really surprising to me. And you can see the sort of return trip I was talking about earlier and how it's actually useful. And 488, which is 34 seconds saved by being able to put blocks anywhere. So, onwards to Knot, which is one of the easiest levels. Scavenger Hunt, which is really cool that you can just get through this um, southeast thin walls. We're going to have some fun when we get to Spirals later. So On the Rocks is one of the biggest time saves, as you would expect. Saving a whopping 294 seconds. But, you know, when the level is based around cloning blocks and I can just put blocks anywhere, uh, that's kind of it. So the really interesting thing about On the Rocks is that it really exposed a flaw in that placing blocks wherever you want paradigm. And that flaw is that you can't put blocks on adjacent tiles in the same direction. You need to be able to make an adjustment. So sometimes you'll have to replace floor to start the parity of block water, block water, in order to be able to turn or even go where you need to go. And that was really 
really enlightening. Uh, it didn't come into play too much during CC1. Um, speaking of, single block replacement there to save two moves on the return trip. Um, couldn't find too much else for Cypher. Oh, wait, as I'm watching this back... No, no, I thought I could push a block through there, but that would, that would then get in the way later. Um, I believe the normal bold for this is 296. It might be 298. Regardless, Cypher doesn't get too much time save. And we're 10 minutes into this, and we're just blazing through. Because that's what this entire uh, entire theory was about. Or, not theory. Um, this entire little optimization challenge was about. So, ladder is an interesting one. Ladder was a very interesting one. Um, so this actually had a bit of a rules question applied to it. We were working out what our restrictions were. And the main restriction we came up with was... You can replace anything you want with a block, but those are the only changes you're allowed to make. And the thing about that is, as I routed ladder, Indy came up with the idea of what if you replaced the trap buttons, but left the connections. And we decided, since we can do whatever we want here, that that wasn't necessary. And by that wasn't necessary, I kind of said, you know, that's stupid, replacing the connection replaces the connection so why would you leave that and so we went with not doing that the additional thing is it's replacement you can't just add a block which means you can place blocks on the lower layer below things you can make block block if you really want to so replacing the water there instead saves two moves which lets you get the yellow key there, and a bunch of teleport replacements worked. Sampler was fun. Uh, Glut was kind of funny. And Florgisborg. That was really weird, but whatever. Uh, Florgisborg, I see you. Nothing too crazy for a while. I mean, anytime you have this sort of spiral, it just kind of breaks. And anytime the exit's just exposed, or has a, even has floor behind it, Again, it just kind of breaks, which I think is pretty fun, honestly. So yeah, a lot of unnecessary blocks there, setting up a nail. Um, force floors are your best friend with this challenge. I, mean, I call it a challenge, but it's really just a fun thing. Uh, but force floors are the most powerful uh, option, really, because you can set up nails to do pretty much anything. And I'm going to watch uh, Mugger Square here again. So you can just see all of those nails that get set up. And again, oops, you can see that there's a half weight, except it's not half weight because that's measured by the oof, um, with some slide delay. And problems was funny because I realized you could just cut straight through. And I actually made up this chip collection route as I went uh, because I didn't remember the fast one. And it turned out when I checked later that I did the fast one. Um, did I remember to put extra nails in at the end of this level? Like, did I catch that? No! So, what I'm talking about there is if there were extra blocks placed by those force floors, that would actually save one move. So, let's just drop everything to do that right now. Uh, live recording. Uh, so, apologies for kind of hanging up the video here. But that gives me some time to talk about Dig Dirt and how I approached it. Because the cycles on Dig Dirt were something. Um, like, they really were. Just trying to find a good way to do that was just not easy. Alright. So let's just play this now. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. Why am I doing this live? <laughs> Whatever, you get the idea. I'll play that out later. So Dig Dirt, I was able to actually save one second by trying a lot of different routes. 
Um, I tried a lot of different routes on the order to collect things, what monsters to leave, and I eventually came up with this route that only drops two moves in total. Uh, if the monster started on the diagonals, this would be two moves faster, but seeing as I was able to find a way to save that second, I just went left with it at this. It's one second faster than Lynx, and that's good enough for me. So, if you, the astute viewer of iSlide would notice some slide delay when the block um, ended up hitting the edge, that's really valuable. Like, that slide delay is so helpful for a few levels, like, you have no idea. Um, but you'll see in maybe an hour, I don't know how long this is going to be. Uh, Grail is a level I put a lot of time into, and it turns out that I got the luck first try after doing some de-randomized routing of this. It's about a 1 in 10 chance. Um, I don't remember too much about this route, other than it was not an easy route to find. But yeah, you can just kind of break in. There's a lot of invisible walls there. So, potpourri. Uh, deep freeze was fun, because you just kind of break into the exit. Uh, loop around was another one that I put a lot of time into. It gave me pause, but I did figure out this route. Uh, if there's any weird movement, it's all about the hidden walls. And you might have noticed on that slide in the top right that there was a block that kind of got hit there. And the reason for that was to create slide delay at the right times to facilitate the rest of this route. So hidden danger is gone in a flash. Uh, Scoundrel, I actually did grind out. It wasn't super fun, but you can see you just kind of do it. Uh, Rink was fun as well, just trying to find that path. And Slow Mo. Now, Slow Mo, I had this one crazy idea at the start. And that one crazy idea was what if I just sped up the, the toggling to every two moves? And it turns out that was slow. So right there, you can see a block block replacement. Uh, a block block replacement is just a block on the first layer and a block on the second layer to replace the clone machine as well. Um, spooks, I put a good bit of time in just coming up with a route for. You'll notice that some teeth are actually left behind. And that's because it takes less time to get around that teeth on this route than it does to move the block out of the way. So right here I have to drop two, but I found I had to drop more than two to manage the teeth. If there's any level I think is improvable, which I'm sure there are quite a few of these levels that are improvable, as shown by seeing an improvement to problems as I'm recording this, um, like this is absolutely near the top of the improvable list. Um, but I don't really have the interest in trying to push it farther. Um, so yeah, if anybody watching this wants to, let me know, give me the route, and I'll make an update video. Uh, Amsterdam was another one I put a lot of effort into, and this particular solution uh, is actually one that I recorded using Hourglass. Now, that's not because I'm incapable of doing the route. Uh, it's just because I found a one-second improvement after I spent a while executing one part of it. I just didn't really feel like redoing it that day, so I tasked it out just to have the solution file. Um, if you think this makes this uh, entire showcase invalid, that's on you. It's a showcase of roots. So, um, back on topic, the loop around there was something that took me a while to spot. And in general, Amsterdam was one that I just had no clue where to begin. So, you, uh, you definitely heard that oof sound, and the reason that oof is there is to carefully measure a half weight to avoid getting killed on the rebound by gaining a spring slide. And there's another half weight here that I kept messing up, and that's the entire reason I tasked it out. Um, I did get that half weight on a run, but then I messed up the subsequent section. I'm just like, I don't care about redoing this enough. Uh, the improvement I found was, I think, that last push 
in the uh, lower left to make this path possible. And just look at how this ends. You cut back and then straight to the finish. And 417. So Victim has nothing to it. And Chip Mine, with a 44 second improvement. 44, 43? Uh, was probably the level that Indy and I went back and forth on the most. I found a big improvement to his route, but then he, in trying to match it, found another big improvement in this upper right section. And on combining them, we were able to push it just even further than either of us thought. Um, my initial estimate was that with the shortcuts back, you'd be able to get to about a 570 on this. But Indy was pretty sure it would cap around 555, I think, after uh, some routing. But it turns out 561 was possible all along. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff and setup for later in this route. Just leaving chips to get chips later or when it's just faster. So there was that, again, the two move expenditure to save two, and then we get this path. We can cut through diagonally, we cleared this path. Again, um, that's a six move expenditure to save eight moves, I believe. And we're done with the top section, and we're a minute into this level. Uh, I don't remember how long it takes normally, but I'm pretty sure it's longer. Uh, Indy's other big contribution to this level was in this bottom section. Just he found such a good way to manage it. Um, just in the two move time saver that I had missed. Um, out of every route, this one was the biggest group effort. And the route is stronger for it. So even though we're right next to that chip, we can get it for free later. And just this entire section with the ordering mattering this much is just incredible. Just because in the original level, the original unaltered level, the order you do things outside of going up first literally doesn't matter. So the fact that this one change, chips challenge, optimized, but you can replace anything with a block, like the fact that it adds this much depth in some cases was just really surprising. Um, as you've seen, there's more than their fair share of just completely trivialized levels. But you get stuff like this. You get these intricate, forward-thinking routes. And speaking of intricate, forward-thinking routes, Eeny Miny Mo. Uh, it's not exactly the most intricate route, but it certainly wasn't a straightforward one to find. There was no clear path forward in this entire level. And the route that we ended up coming up with, this was another one where we went back and forth a little, uh, was to do the gliders before the blocks. And the reason for that is just where the exit is. And of course, the fact that you can shortcut back into the spiral section to take a force floor back. So the rest of this is just picking up the last 12 chips one at a time and walking to the finish with a quick little wedge. So nothing too crazy. Eeny Miny Mo is definitely a normal level. Um, but the big takeaway was just figuring out how to block off the gliders from getting in the way. And speaking of figuring out how to block things off from getting in the way, Bounce City. Uh, and trying to route the keys for this. I did not expect this level to be this interesting. But it turns out that it actually was. Uh, Nightmare was also pretty interesting. There were a couple one move, uh, yeah, there were a couple two for two trade-offs here, but ultimately nothing more. And, and speaking of interesting levels, Corridor was actually one of the most fascinating because you're not just juggling the chips and the key, you're also juggling the keys and which keys are necessary and how you can take shortcuts with that. And then also, which blocks are worth adding in to replace walls? How can you make shortcuts? Like, what kinds of shortcuts can you even make? And the overall route is just really cool. Uh, 
reverse alley is kind of boring. I just make it so the tanks don't get in the way, and then just kind of do it. But you think, wait, you can literally go through walls. Why isn't that done? Well, the reason it's not done is simply because it wasn't faster. I did test in a few places, going in the opposite direction around the spiral, or cutting in and cutting out, but nothing was faster. It's just this collection route works too well. And with that, we're almost at the halfway point of the set. Um, Morton has a lot of hidden walls and just generally a really awkward layout. I expected this to be so much smoother than it was. But no, going in is awkward, coming out, or going, yeah, going in is awkward, coming out is not. And it's just a matter of trying to find good places to, you know, get in or get out. And I was really expecting this one to be interesting, but it just wasn't. Uh, playtime, I don't actually remember this route, like, at all. Okay, so, we got some fun stuff going on here. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You can see what I mean about, uh, back when I was talking about on the rocks, though. Uh, where there's that whole parody thing, and Steam was interesting insofar as it's just a matter of finding a way to do it while only moving up and left. So, for those who didn't notice that, yes, that was a cross-check. And fourplex is done. Now, you might be thinking you might be able to break in with the non-existence glitch and replacing a diagonal stripe of fire, and no, you can't. So, Invincible Champion was a matter of just trying to find a good cycle for dealing with these bugs at the end, which I was able to do. Indy did it in less blocks, but that's what I had. Uh, four square was a fun one, just trying to find a way to get to that lower room as quickly as possible. Uh, vanishing Act. Now, if you're familiar with the 733 bold route, this is that. There's nothing else here except for one small time saver on the final return trip to the exit. Um, that's not for lack of trying, it's just that the nature of this level and how it's more open-ended and how you get around than chip mine, which is very, very much fixed paths, meant that there wasn't any way to make a gain by running ahead to make a shortcut for later. Um, and trust me, that was not for lack of looking. Like, even there, it looks like there should be a way to save some time, but there's just not. It's not here. So, in terms of levels that were just disappointing, this one tops the list. Um, it was one of the last ones I worked on, alongside Mishmash, Chipmine, Blink, and it's just... disappointing that it didn't live up to what I expected. But that's on me. Um, other levels I left behind were Ice Cube. Uh, I left Chiller for a while, too. So the big thing about Socialist Action was just I built a wall. Uh, up the Block was really weird. Uh, the entire crux of the level gets ignored, as with almost all of these levels, but that doesn't mean it's easy to find a way to collect things. Like, far from it. Um, there's those weird triangles with the chips, which is a beautiful decision, by the way. Uh, and right there, that runs afoul of parity to lose two moves that I couldn't find any way to avoid. Um, I put some stuff in to just get gliders out of the way. So you... Given Invincible Champion, you'd think Wars would be more of the same, but it turns out Wars is actually both easier and faster. So yeah, just some more easy levels. And then Spirals. Just look at this route. It's honestly kind of striking how the blocks end up laid out, but... 
Uh, this is another one that I'm sure is improvable, but I put a lot of time into coming up with this path. Just trying to find ways to break into and out of the lane I want to be in, given that all the thin walls are southeast. So that made it, for a while, much harder to move um, to the right or to the left, just in any one direction. It was... It took some thinking to come up with a, a paradigm for being able to move in those directions. Anyway, this is Blockbuster. Everybody knows Blockbuster. So you can see that little move is, again, parody reasons. And in the first room, I create slide delay um, just so that I can do that. So the way I create that slide delay is just replacing one of the cloners, uh, all but one of the cloners with block block, and then of the ones that I replaced, I also, what else did I do? Uh, and then I replaced the ice tile, two tiles in front of the block cloner with a block, so that block is perpetually stuck and is always going to make slide delay. And the reason I did that is just so that I can push a block into a one-tile slide and get out of the way. So Jumping Swarm is completely unchanged. We're just flying through the set. I set aside an hour and a half to record this, and even with seeing a one-move improvement to problems, I'm just... I'm a half hour in and almost done, it feels like. Uh, Vortex was absolute hell. Uh, I did this one immediately just to get it out of the way, but um, what I did for this was I replaced everything I thought I might want to replace with a block, with a block, and then just started routing it in Super CC. Now, this one is assuredly going to be improvable, but this route went through a lot of iterations to find. Um, you can see that the cycles are just set up um, to facilitate exactly what I need to at the end without waiting. Wish I could have saved one more second, but it's good enough for me. Road sign was really funny, just with how all the chips are placed. And you can see that as uh, Indy and I went along, we did get a little better at finding stuff. So I put off Now You See It, but it turns out Now You See It is one of the easier levels to root in this form. Just because there's so few places you need to go, and it's mostly floor. Or, yeah, it's mostly floor. But the only things left are those stray blue walls. And those stray blue walls, they do get in the way, but they don't get in the way as much as you would expect. Um, the really surprising thing about this was that I couldn't find a way to break into the exit area. Um... Four square, you just break out of the level and you're done. Uh, now, would I be surprised if Paranoia has an improvement? No, I would not be surprised if Paranoia has an improvement somewhere. That said, I couldn't find any in the starting area, and I did put a lot of effort into managing the ball and Paramecia cycles. Okay, not so much the Paramecia, mostly the ball cycles over here. The whole point was to try to minimize waiting here as much as possible, and I'm pretty sure that's minimum waiting, uh, while still allowing access to this upper section. Um, the randomized slides that CC1 has were just so useful for gaining a little bit of time here and a little bit of time there. Anyway, moving on to Metastabled Chaos, and we're done with Metastabled Chaos. So, so shrinking... Shrinking was crazy. I was able to find a route with no waiting at all. But it took some doing to set up, and I'm so pleased with saving that second. Um, that's Catacombs. Um, now, Colony, fortunately, has multiple exits, so it's just a matter of finding a way to make my way into the bottom left corner without having to deviate from stepping left and stepping down. 
uh, apartment is much the same. Or it's just a matter of going up and right as much as possible until you reach the exit. Uh, ice house. Like, look at that. Look at that route. Ice house is broken. Uh, memory is another one where it's just two directions and never deviate from that. The main reason for this is I'm pretty sure most people thought it would be possible to break into this exit. It wasn't. Uh, also, levels I've skipped for a while. Jailer. But when I actually got down to it and thought about routes for this, there really weren't that many options. Um, mostly because I noticed this way of breaking in and kind of looping around the corners. And once you have corner looping, the route kind of falls into place. It's just a matter of managing a couple cycles near the beginning and making sure they don't get in the way as you're moving blocks later. So, to my surprise, Jailer ended up being very reasonable with this restriction, despite my initial thought being... Or not restriction, with this, um... No, this is kind of a restriction of being able to place blocks whatever, wherever you want. Like, it turned out to be very reasonable, overall. So, this is Short Circuit. There's no way to save time here. Rare is the level where there's no way to save time. Um, so far in CCLP1, I said I'm through Flipside. That's mostly true. I've skipped two levels so far. Um, well, other than being stuck at Flipside. I've skipped Wedges because it's really intimidating. And I've skipped Key Farming because my initial route involved burying a block under the skates. And it turns out you can't do that. Uh, it'll crash MSCC if you step on it. So, I need to reroute that level, but the only level so far that I can remember that I couldn't save time on has been Mini Pyramid. Uh, I don't know if that's a hint to the 236 route or not, but it's still 236, and I couldn't even save a single move. So, as long as Mini Pyramid isn't public by the time I get around to recording CCLP1, but you can replace anything you want with a block. Um... For that route, I'll just show the public 235 and say, hey, this level's unchanged. Um, so yeah, short circuit, good filler time to talk about other stuff. Except the level's almost over. I don't think there's any other levels in CC1 that don't save time. Oh well. Gotta love Kablam. So yeah, what I said about fourplex with kind of diagonaling through fire, you can do that in Balzo Fire, which I think is funny. Uh, block out. Man, what a weird one this was. Uh, this particular chip collecting path seems weird, but it's actually equivalent to just going left to right. Which I think is really funny and just worth doing just for that reason alone. So you'll notice some blocks over here. And the entire reason for the blocks over here is to try to minimize the necessary waiting in this section. And as you can see, I got it down to one move plus these, this two at the end that I couldn't avoid. I think that's really cool. Um, Chiller was the level that Indy routed and came up with a cool route for. But then I came up with this, and I did play this one out. Just look at how fast that ice section goes. It's probably too fast to see. And I did try and find other ways to deal with the toggling, but I just couldn't. So we're just going to skip ahead to this ice section. And we're going to highlight this. So you'll notice that there's slide delay. But I didn't specifically create slide delay in this level, did I? Well, it turns out I did. If you see the block in the top left here, I specifically timed this so that the block would hit another block and create slide delay the moment I need to push that block. So that's what happens every time during this section I have one of those one tile blocks. Every single time. 
yeah, Killer was a really fun one to work on. I saved a lot of time. Uh, time Lapse was a really interesting level as well, because Indy came up with this really sick route for it that beat mine by two or three moves, and I saved one move, one move, and when I looked again, I found a way to use the glider. And I think the fact that there's a way to use that glider, just like in the original, is, is fascinating, and it's one of those things that I'm really happy to see. But yeah, directing that glider to hit the toggle button took quite a bit of thinking, and to do it in a way that still set up all of the, uh, whatchamacallit, the spring slides. Sorry, it's three in the morning. Uh, my throat's getting a little sore. Um, and I still have 34 levels to go. 33 levels to go. Oh man, Blockbuster 2 was so fun. It has that same slide delay setup idea. And I'm just trying to find a good route for this top section. Which, you know, lots of boosting there. But I'm really happy with that route. Huh. That was improved. Originally I had a 734, but I think Indy actually came up with a small idea as a, as a way to improve the top, and I carried it farther. Yeah, Indy and I had a lot of fun with this, at least. I think Indy did. I know I did. <laughs> That's a funny route. I totally forgot it was like that. So, totally fair. Uh, we're already at totally fair. Remember SJUM? Doesn't have much. Uh, unfortunately, pushing a block that slides into a trap creates slide delay. And that was just really unfortunate there, because it costs one move. Now, Fire Trap was one where um, my route was originally not very good despite my best efforts, um, the obvious first thing to do with Fire Trap is to get the uh, fire boots as quickly as possible. But what do you do past that point? What else is the goal of Fire Trap? And it turns out, well, you need toggling walls, right? Well, you don't. Originally, I thought you did. And... This slide is so tantalizing, but no, there's not a way to break into it. Um, mixed nuts is just as simple as walking to the exit. Uh, block and roll. For all the trouble it's given everybody who's optimized it, get destroyed. Skelzy is gone on a flash. Um, all full. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get two yellow keys as quickly as possible. And the lobster trap was funny, because for the longest time I did not realize you could break in through the top. So it was a matter of trying to break in through the bottom the intended way, and just what's the fastest way to do that? And we're already at Ice Cube, which... This is the other level I tasked, and I did it after Amsterdam. Just because, look at this thing. It's not that this level is out of my range, because it is just boosting, and normal boosting at that. But come on. There's just so many points where slide delay is set up and managed at the exact right times. And so many places where blocks are added and paced in such a way to create spring slides on any point where there's two adjacent steps. And even a cross-check there, at which point slide delay is mostly managed for the rest of the level, but you still need to worry about it. But yeah, that's Ice Cube, and that's probably the level I put the most time into routing for this, next to Blink. And Chipmine. Um, it's just... It's crazy. It's so crazy to think about that route. But yeah, we're coming up on the home stretch here, and much faster than I expected. So here's Mix Up, where this route took me a little bit to execute, just because half weights... I don't know, when I was doing it, I just couldn't get half weights for some reason. Um, I'm sure you noticed that half weight, uh, in order to push that block into the single ice tile. And the reason I did that 
is very simple. Slide delay manipulation based on where I put the blocks on the slide. Now, Blob Dance has a Melinda of 951. Everybody knows it. So how did I get 958? Well, unlike Reverse Alley, it was faster to go in a different room order. And more interestingly than that, it was faster to leave some chips and some rooms behind and just divide them in two. Which I found that really surprising. But, you know, the route's still kind of awkward. big surprise was that in the seven blob room I still had to manage two blobs and I still had to get lucky at the end. So pain, like most CC1 levels, required collecting the chips and unfortunately that meant doing this. <laughs> Fortunately I could, you know, speed up the process a little bit. And also, fortunately, you don't need to do any of the ridiculous block pushing. So, back-to-back -back non existence glitch levels. Double maze, and trust me, were actually the first ones. What was that? Did I lose a move there? I gotta watch this again. Oh, wait, no, no, that was to pace slide delay. Okay. So, both of those times where I backtracked were to pace uh, so that I get spring slide and not have to make a half wait before pushing a block. Um, partial post, a perfect partial post. Oh yeah, your cast doesn't have any time saved. So to anybody who's made it this far in the video, thank you. I'm glad that this silly exercise in routing levels interested you. Um, so first I want to apologize to Josh for not recording more walls of CCLP3 for the past 10 months. It's been a bit of a crazy time. As it is, uh, as I said, I'm recording this at 2, 3 in the morning. Um, you have a kid now, Matthew. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, he's asleep right now. Um, Jesse, my wife, oh yeah, I got married, <laughs> uh, moved in. And, you know, that's been awesome. But it does mean that recording time, specifically recording time, has been pretty hard to come by. But I'm okay with that. Um, once we get some more space, then I, or, you know, if I can just find another way to record other than, uh, waiting until everybody's asleep and talking kind of quietly out in the office space, um, I will absolutely do some more recording stuff. I have a lot of stuff I would like to do at some point, and it's just a matter of finding the time to do it. Anyway, that's your cast, and we've got ten levels to go. Nine levels to go. <laughs> uh, underground, I was able to save one second on the current bold route. I don't think... Yeah, no, there's no point where leaving a Paramecia would ever save time. Because it would either get in the way, or the block gets in the way. For the exact same amount of time. At least I don't think there's ever a time where leaving a Paramecia could save time. If I'm wrong, I'd love to see that route. Pentagram was easy. Stripes was kind of funny. So I put more blocks in than were strictly necessary because I wanted to use the blocks as a memorization aid um, to just kind of follow the blocks. So fireflies. I don't remember if I replaced the fireballs or if I set up a little trap for them, but trying to route this was really interesting. Just, you can get through the fire, but you can't get through multiple fire in a row, and the level is four-way rotationally symmetric, but you don't start and stop on the same side. So even if you can do the same sorts of things in the same areas repeated, you don't do the same thing in the same areas repeated. 
at least not overall for the entire level. Anyway, that's Fireflies, and let's move on to Thanks too. Now, this is a route that I'm going to tell you right now, I manipulated that. I did not grind for that. Um, I found a seed, and I set up that seed to work. That said, it's a pretty cool route. Very fast. Uh, Cakewalk was also quite fast. Not very difficult. Um, did I say that Double Maze was the last non-existence? I lied. Force Field was going to be non-existence. And Mind Block is just as simple as walking to the exit and a complete anti-climax. That is Chips Challenge 1, but you can replace anything you want with a block. Total score, 6,036,500. Um, which I believe is about 5,980 seconds ahead of... No, it be 5,920 seconds ahead of the current All Bold score, roughly. Um, but yeah, if you've got any improvements for this other than problems which I'm going to score as soon as I stop recording. Uh, let me know. If you thought this was interesting, let me know. I'm going to be doing the other sets on my own time no matter what, but they might get prioritized higher if people like this. But yeah, I uh, hope you liked seeing Shift Challenge 1 completely ransacked and done quickly. Uh, yeah, that's all. Bye.